Hey there, here we are again, footy fans having some footy fun on Footy Fin here. And listen, just a little quick wrap back to the Rugby Union for now. Little quick wrap of Bledisloe Game 2 from the weekend. Um, look, the Wallabies came very close. Uh, but sadly, in the end, uh, they lost 23-20 after New Zealand cooked kicked a long-range penalty in the last minute of the game. Uh, but look, probably panned out was a lot better than game one for the Wallabies, and um, they did better than expected, I would say. And most importantly, they earned a bit of respect, I think, put a bit of respect back in the jersey. Um, and I've got a green and gold microphone too um, uh, to celebrate that, as you might have noticed. Uh, but anyway, uh, look, Wallabies raced away to an early lead, two early tries, um, and then gradually throughout the second half, New Zealand clawed it back. Um, now, we do have to say a couple of things here. Although the Wallabies have got some injuries in the props um, after game one, and that's really going to hurt them come the World Cup, um, apart from that, I think they had pretty much their um, strongest team available and uh, taking the park. On the flip side, New Zealand had made quite a few changes. They'd already sewn up the Rugby Championship and the Bledisloe Cup. Um, and um, so really they were sort of playing their, their B strength backline um, in many ways. Um, sort of second and third choice, um, scrum half and five eighth. Um, they had a debutant on the wing, fellow Will Jordan, who usually plays wing at fullback. Um, they'd made a couple of changes in their forward pack, but pretty much close to full strength forward pack. On the flip side, it was in Dunedin, deep in the South Island of New Zealand, and um, um, a bit of a fortress for the All Blacks. Um, so anyway, look, I think in the second half, just some mistakes that sadly are sort of all too familiar to Wallabies fans. A few mistakes crept in, a few drop balls, uh, lost lineouts, etc. Um, I think what really hurt the Wallabies maybe more than anything though, was that um, they got to about 22 minutes in, um, had scored 17 points by then and well done. Sadly, for the rest of the game, nearly an hour of play, um, they only managed another three points. And look, against a top quality um, opposition like New Zealand, you just can't afford to do that. So um, yeah, at this level, just not good enough. Uh, look, it was um, a bit of a case of deja vu, sadly. Like in recent years, even last year in game one in Melbourne, We've seen the Wallabies, um, you know, earn a lead late in the game, only to see it snatched away. Um, so it really was a bit of deja vu. It's pretty much um, um, like follows a script for, for various Bledisloe games over the last, gosh, 10, 15 years. Um, interestingly, it is uh, reminiscent of um, when the tables were turned back in the Wallabies golden era, the sort of late 90s, early 2000s. We saw, I think, uh, Matt Burke once, might have been 98 or so, or was it later? I don't know. He scored a match winner right near the end. I think he put his shoulder out in doing it. Uh, we saw John Eels kick a, kick a goal in Wellington in about 2000. Uh, Todd Kefu scored a, a try in, um, was it 01 or 02? Anyway, the tables are definitely turned. But look, there you have it. Um, who knows what this means now leading into the World Cup. It gave New Zealand a bit of a wake-up call anyway. It will probably give the Aussies a bit of confidence. Um, hopefully that's not misplaced. But anyway, that's it. That's my Bledisloe Game 2 wrap. And now uh, we look forward to the Rugby World Cup in September. But until then, keep your eye out for my NRL tips coming. Until next time, catch you between the sticks. See ya.